Over two years ago, Line 6 released an amplifier that changed my life. All right, uh, that might be a little dramatic, but the truth is the Line 6 Catalyst 100 has been my main gigging amp since it was released in early 2022. From local shows to regional tours, I've used the Catalyst 100 at probably 75% of my live shows in recent years. And now, Line 6 is upgrading my most versatile solid state amp, and I couldn't be more excited. So, let's talk about it. Welcome to Get Offset, my name is Emily, and I love seeing your smile. Before I dive too deep into the Catalyst CX family of amps, which includes the 60, 100, and 200 watt versions, I want to tell you why I've been using the Callus 100 so heavily for the past couple years. Quick disclaimer, Line 6 sent me this to demo and is paying me a small fee which helps keep this channel running, but thoughts and opinions are all mine. And as you might have guessed, if I didn't like these amps personally, I wouldn't have been using them so heavily over the past few years. Also, if you're only interested in the sound samples, skip to the timestamp shown on the screen, which will also be in the video description. I'll have full chapters down there. Back to the catalyst and why I love it so much. Firstly, it's robust. As much as I love a good tube amp, I'm not sticking it in the bottom of an RV. Yes, I've toured in an RV more than once, for a week or more at a time. The Catalyst 100, however, has survived multiple tours of the Pacific Northwest in the spring and winter, and is really no worse for wear. Pop a cover on that baby and it's all good. Second, it's versatile. I always felt like the amps of the Catalyst covered a lot of ground, so it can fit nearly any gig I play. The tone shaping options have everything I need, bass, middle, treble, presence controls, channel volume, in addition to the master volume, a boost that's uniquely tuned to each amp and effects which we'll talk about a bit later. The Catalyst amps also have a built-in attenuator so you can go your full wattage to as little as half a watt, which is what I'll be doing later in this video, so I can adjust my output depending on the size of the room. But full disclaimer, I usually use the full wattage at probably 90% of the gigs I use this amp at, but I almost exclusively use a half a watt at home. There's also an effects loop so you can put dirt in front of the amplifier and effects after. You can alternately turn off the effects loop and use this as a power speaker for something like the HX Domb XL, PodGo, or even the Pod Express. Speaking of which, check out the Pod Express demos I did recently. Link in video description, probably, maybe a little pop-up, who, who knows. This kind of leads into my third favorite thing about the Catalyst, that it saves room on my pedal board. I usually run the Catalyst 100 with a bit of a slapback delay and some spring reverb, which meant I only needed, you know, a couple additional pedals for about half of my gigs. Fourth, sound people love it. They especially love the DI. The first time I gigged with this amp was at the Tractor Tavern in Seattle. I was in the band for a John Prine tribute night, and the sound tech was a little skeptical of the DI at first. But after a sound check, he waxed poetic about how good it sounded, and uh, I, I've literally not gotten a single complaint about this amp, especially how the DI sounds. Fifth is the ability to save presets. If you've watched this channel before, and you might not have, I play a lot of pickup gigs in town, and those range from traditional country to pop folk to R&B leading singer-songwriter stuff to psychedelic indie pop. That's a lot of range to cover, and having even two onboard presets is clutch. I mean, I can have my basic country sound in a slightly more colorful, gritty setting, and that'll get me 80% of the way there for most of my gigs, and then I can fine tune as needed. Speaking of those presets, I just pulled this off the amp because the cord was too short. Uh, I have this little switcher here. This is a dual latching foot switch and you can buy this for I think $40. I highly recommend it. It doesn't come with the amp, but you can go between your amp sounds and turn effects on and off. And I'll get more into this later, but check this out in the video description as well. All right, now that I've told you what I loved about the original Catalyst 100, let's dive into what makes the Catalyst 100 CX different. The single biggest change is the doubling of amp modes. The Line 6 Catalyst CX family of amps boasts 12 amp voicings, which were pulled from the Helix slash HX family of modelers. That's two modes for each voicing, so let's do a quick reset and dig into those. 
There are six base amp types, clean, boutique, chime, crunch, dynamic, and high gain. Each one of these has two groups, which you can toggle between by pressing the channel A, B buttons at the same time. Let's go ahead and look at that right now. So if the LED blinks once, it's in group one. If it blinks twice, which it just did, you guessed it, you're in group two. So let's go ahead and go back to group one. And I am using a Sennheiser E906 for this video, as you can see there, but I'm also recording a direct signal from the XLR out in the back, which is over here. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use yet. I'll put a note down here. I might blend them, um, but I have, <laughs> just wanna make sure I have them both because I love a good redundancy. Let's get started with clean. Group one is called Clarity. It's a Line 6 original and promises pristine cleans even when cranked. <laughs> As you can see, I even have the gain up, the gain knob up to close to noon. So let's hear group twos. The group two clean is an archetype clean mod. Its description is rich and clear clean tones. <laughs> Yes, I am using some reverb. I am using the spring reverb type. It just sounds better with it. All right, the next voicing of amps is Boutique. And this is the one that I tended to lean most on. Group one is the Line 6 original, The Aristocrat. <laughs> the Grammatico GSG. This is also significantly darker, which could be a good thing when you're playing a jazz master a lot like I do. I love this actually. <laughs> And I have found that even with the original Catalyst, the guitar I'm playing and the pickups I'm using, that really affects what my favorite amp mode is. So yeah, I, I love this. It's not as dirty, but you can, you can make it dirtier. Okay. After that, we have chime. I'm gonna turn the gain back down a bit. I am trying to keep the tone stack the same. Both of these are line six original. Group one is Carolyn. I'm probably saying that wrong, which is uh, purported to be a bigger, deeper classic chime. Ooh, that's nice. All right, let's go to group two. That's gonna be the Elmsley, which promises smooth lows combined with well-defined high-end sparkle. Man, that sounds good. I would still do some EQ on that, but man. Thank you. 
Next, we move on to crunch. Group one is a line six original, voltage, crunchy with a British accent. <laughs> Moving on to two, this is a 2204 mod, a classic British mid-gain amp tone type thing with an additional edge, it says. I think this is another great addition. I'm actually really loving all of these new amp tones. I don't know if it's just because they're new and I'm excited about them, but. sounds with lower gain. Actually, I like that with lower gain too. I'd EQ that a little bit, but I really, really love that. That group two for crunch, really nice. Next up we have dynamic. And FYI, all of the next four amps are Line 6 Originals. Group 1 in Dynamic is called Kinetic, a highly touch-responsive mid-gain tone. Right, it, that's what I remember it sounding like. Obviously, jazz masters are brighter guitars. Group two uh, is Vento. I'm not sure I'm saying that right, Vento. Uh, but it says it combines vintage American and British sounds with a mid emphasis. <laughs> like that one better also. Turn up the gain some. Oh yeah. I'm going to revisit that, I think. Last but not least, we have the high gain. These are, you know, not made for me. I think these all sound good with extended range instruments. The first is Oblivion. It's contemporary high gain with extended lows. Again, those extended range guitars. <laughs> for me, but very fun. <laughs> All right, group two. That is uh, Badonk, which is a great name. I really want to go back to dynamic on that one. That was, I think the group two of dynamic was my favorite. The high gain though, um, Andrew Baina is someone I would really like to know what he, what he thinks of those. And I want to know what you think of those. So let me know in the comments which amp voicing mode group was your favorite. And if you like what you're here so far, I want to quickly note that you can pick this up and a ton of other things uh, via affiliate links in my video description. The Sweetwater affiliate program is 
my personal favorite. Sweetwater has been so good to me and I know that they will treat you the way you deserve to be treated. And using those links to buy really anything on Sweetwater or wherever is a great way to support this channel doing things that, let's be honest with ourselves and each other, we were probably going to do anyway. Also, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. You can even say thanks, say thanks by tipping uh, the channel below, but no pressure to ever do that. You watching is thanks enough and so is that smile. <laughs> All right, let's pick an amp sound, adjust it, and save it to a preset. As I just mentioned, I really loved the dynamic on group two, so let's go with that. Um, I'm not gonna touch the boost yet. I want to start this a little bit clean, but we can fine tune the gain and EQ setting. So open E. I think that's something that we can roll with. I'm on channel A right now, so I'm gonna save our homework. To save a preset, make sure you're on the channel you wanna to save to, and just hold down the button until you get those flashes. Now we can navigate between A and B and hear how it you know, changes. I actually have my handy dandy, try not to shake the table, switcher <laughs> so i'm just going to use that you can buy these for 40 dollars. any uh, latching type switch will work i'll talk about that more later <laughs> It uh, went to the B that I was building for fun earlier, and that also had the boost on it, as you could hear. Again, every boost is tuned specifically for the amp is my uh, general understanding. So boost is, you know, it's cool enough. <laughs> I, yeah, it's actually really, really nice to have. I'm very glad it's there. And I'm not a big like boost person. So for me to say the boost rules is, that's saying something. The other big change to the Catalyst CX series is an adjustment to the effects. And it's a smaller adjustment, but it's an important one. The original Catalyst had one effects channel, this one right here. Uh, you could choose between delay, which is what I primarily used, pitch slash filter effects or modulation. And then there was another reverb channel, which was right here. Now with the Catalyst CX100, you can choose whichever two effects you want. So if you wanna use delay and modulation, you can do that. Before, to be clear, it was just one effect type and reverb. You can also, and I believe you could do this before, change the position of the effects in the signal chain. By default, delay and reverb would be after the amp, while pitch slash filter and modulation would be before. You could change that in the official software, or you can hold down the effect button, the button above the effect that engages it, and move the dial to the left or the right of where noon would be. One thing that I noticed just looking at these, because the, the CX and the original Catalyst are very similar looking, but one thing is that you can see those controls now at the top of the amp. Before, it was a bit of a hidden setting. By the way, the boost also has a noise gate you can turn on or off. Let's talk about the effects. You can tell what effects type is active by the color on the button. Green is delay. <coughs> Modulation is blue, pitch slash filter is a purple, kind of, you might, you might perceive that as like a pink. And reverb, I believe it says it's red. I'm, I'm seeing orange, um, but everyone sees colors a little bit differently. Unfortunately, you can't run two of the same 
type of effect. So you can't run, say, a chorus on the modulation and a tremolo, and that is a bit of a bummer, to be honest. But to set an effect type for each knob, which controls the mix, by the way, press and hold the effect button for a few seconds. You saw that the intensity of the amp selector changed and it went back to clean because this is a simple delay. I'm not going to go through and name each effect one by one. I'm going to show off a few, so keep watching. I still think that the delay and reverb are the best effects to run on this amp, but honestly, the pitch filter stuff was really fun. It tracked way better than I expected, but I still don't see using those modes very often personally. I mean, but these, they're really cool. So I'm also gonna show you how to change the effects, which I didn't do before. So you hold the button down, that flashed, and then you hit the tap button because that is a tap tempo and a tuner, and it will change colors. So again, this will be the modulation, and this will be the pitch slash filter stuff. <laughs> it's an octaver. It's based on the EBS Octabase, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's LED indicator number one. I really like that one. There's another that I like. It's based on the, what is it? The, um, Tycopra fuzz. So we want dynamic, I think. That is, that's really fun. Spitty and so cool. I think those would be really fun to turn on and off with the foot switch. Here, it's sold separately. So. That's pretty cool. But again, I don't think that those are necessities and I'm not sure they're gonna be the reason someone who's on the fence ultimately buys this or not. But let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that. If you're buying this because of one of those really cool octave effects. By the way, again, I said the pitch and mod the pitch and modulation are before the amp. Um, this also has an effects loop, which I think is really cool. So you can run other modulation between the amp and the cab. I know a lot of people like to do that. I personally don't, but it's again, this is just a very flexible amplifier that has a lot of things that you can do. Uh, I say that because I, the octave effects do tend to work best at the beginning of a signal chain. So if you're running a lot of stuff, it's gonna be really hard to get that at the beginning of the signal chain unless you're using that effects loop. So again, like I just, I think it's really cool. Like it's thoughtful. Moving on, modulation, I think is a fine choice for the amp to have. I'm especially partial to the plastic chorus on the Clean Amp LED, which is based on the Orion ACHZ chorus pedal. I mean, chorus on an amp is just plain nice. So let's go ahead and cue that up. Classic, classic. I really love that chorus sound. There's also an opto trim based on the Fender Optical Tremolo. You can just hold it down momentarily and change things, but obviously since I'm over here, I can't really use both hands to do that, but. So I'm gonna tap in a tempo. That's really nice. There's another one I wanna show off. It's on LED6. Uh, that's high gain. Uh, it's a rotary mode based on the Leslie 145. I love all three of those because they're things you'd find in a traditional amp. 
I'm not 100% sure about the Leslie or Rotary, but I think you understand what I mean. The other pitch modulation filter effects I didn't cover are Phaser, Flanger, Univibe, Growler Synth, which is an effect I really liked on the Pod Express for bass. Check out that video. Um, pitch Harmony, Pitch Shift, and Synth String. They're all cool and I think they sound good. They're just not for me and that's okay. Maybe they're for you. That brings up the USB connectivity in the back, which you can use to edit presets and global settings. You can really, really fine tune that stuff. So I highly recommend you digging into that, especially if you wanna like get really specific on timing for delay or something like that. You can also use the USB connectivity to use the Catalyst CX100 as a four in, four out audio interface. As an interface is actually super smart. You can record two channels, USB 1 and 2, with fully processed output from the Catalyst CX and two unprocessed dry DI channels via USB 3 and 4. That, that makes reamping a breeze. You can also send clean audio back through the amp for jamming along to tracks and for reamping using the Catalyst processing. Check out the manual for more on that, but I personally find that to be super slick and I would totally use those features when recording, even if I don't plan on using the Catalyst for the final recording. It's really amazing that you can get that process feel out loud while recording, while still capturing a completely unprocessed DI track that you can build out later. And that you can do all that with a USB instead of routing cables and DI boxes and all that, just gorgeous. I really love that. I'm gonna use that next time I record because Normally, I record directly into my doll, either completely silently with headphones or I use studio monitors. And then, you know, I, I reamp or use plugins later. Frankly, this is way more appealing. Ultimately, I, I like what I'm turning out the way that I do it, but studio monitors and headphones never really give you that, that amp feeling like this really, really does. Honestly, there's so much more this amp can do that I wasn't even able to, to tell you about. I mean, it has a headphone output, MIDI compatibility, like MIDI expression, stuff like that. Uh, an entire app, again, that I didn't even dig into in this video, but I did in my, my last video for the original amp. Um, so if you wanna see how the app works, check out my original demo of the Lion 6 Cal's 100. I, I'm guessing the app is probably updated a bit since then, but it should still give you a general feel of what you can do within the app, which is a lot. And by the way, quick note, if you're using the app and things are like grayed out, there's a chance that you're accidentally in manual mode because that was, that was a mistake that I made. <laughs> but if you like this video, please consider checking out one of the videos on the screen. Uh, I think they're over here. They might be on top of my face. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy them just as much, if not more than this. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for understanding. Keep on smiling. And until next time, my name is Emily. Goodbye.